morning guys happy tuesday remember those egg bites i made yesterday they were a hit so i went to the dollar store and picked up another muffin tin and yes unfortunately our dollar store is no longer a real dollar store i don't think real dollar stores exist anymore as you can see i beg your finest pardon yeah but it was still cheaper than going to like the grocery store or Michael's, so I just got it. Betty Crocker. So I'm gonna throw this in the sink, hand wash it real quick. And today, instead of six, we're making 12 egg bites. Yesterday I did spinach and feta and half ate half of them, no pun intended. She loved them, so I'm gonna make spinach and feta for her again. If you know me, you know that I am a jalapeno goblin. Like, I love jalapenos so much. So I'm going to make myself jalapeno onions and tomatoes. And then Keisha really liked how they looked, but Keisha doesn't eat veggies, you guys. She's When it comes to food, <laughs> Keisha's like a toddler when it comes to food. I be having to sneak her veggies in. Like, I literally got her to eat peppers by hiding them in Rasta pasta, which is ironic that that's what I'm making for dinner tonight, but... Anyways, she thought they looked good, so I'm gonna make her bacon and cheddar egg bites. Don't worry though, I'll get her veggies in tonight with dinner with the Rasta pasta. <laughs> you gotta you gotta feed these kids one way or the other, girl. Okay, let me go wash this, and I'll be right back. Okay, here's halves, uh, spinach and feta. This is mine, jalapeno, tomatoes, and onions, and this is Keisha's bacon crumble and cheddar cheese. I think mine looks the saddest. <laughs> um, I took the jelly part out the tomatoes because I don't want the egg whites to get all soggy. And I took the seeds out the jalapenos as well. I don't know. It looks like it needs something else, but we'll see how it turns out. I've got my muffin tins here. I'm going to butter them up really well because yesterday, um, yesterday they kind of stuck a little bit. So I'll just make sure I'm extra generous today with the margarine. And then we'll pop them in the oven at... 400 for 30 minutes, same as yesterday. Okay, we're gonna do um, four of each, like four of each different kind. First batch will be for half. We'll do spinach and feta. Spinach, feta, salt, and pepper. And a mix. And do a little TikTok as well. Okay, here's how mine turned out. Mine kind of looks the saddest. That's okay. Scoop it in. And again, this should equal four because I used four eggs. Okay, last one is Keisha's, which is bacon crumble and cheddar. And she gets four as well. They look beautiful, look. Ooh, how pretty. Here they are out the oven. They look nice. Keisha's kind of got a weird shape because of all the cheese in there. But I'm, I'm about to pop them out and hopefully they come out really easily this time. Here's how Keisha's turn out. These are bacon and cheddar. Um, now that they're cooked, hers look the most basic. When they were raw though, mine looked the most basic, but now mine look nice and colorful. And then here's how halves turned out which you guys already saw yesterday. So yeah, second day in a row. Breakfast, okay. breakfast was good. I am hooked. Like I'm hooked now, you guys. Those egg bites, new obsession. You may or may not have noticed that the red braids are gone. I'm back to black. You go back to her and I'll go back to... Anyways, I took my braids out last night, actually. I couldn't sleep, so I just sat in the bed and took them out. I rocked the red boho braids for five weeks. So please save your, you took them out already? Comments. Five weeks is pretty average for me. I mean, I typically wear a protective style for four to six weeks. Um depending on the style. 
I don't really like to go more than eight weeks, obviously, because my hair is very fine and fragile. So for me, it just works best around that four to six week mark. Less tension because the longer you keep them in, the heavier they get, obviously, with the new growth. So yeah, I took them out last night and I definitely need a wash. Am I going to wash them right now? No. So right now we're just going to detangle together. Detangle and moisturize. This is uh, just water. Plain water. In one of these misting spray bottles, which I love that misting spray bottle. My, um, my great nieces got it for me. When Marley passed, they actually made me a huge... Uh, what do you call it like huge care package or basket care care basket it had a bunch of stuff in it they got me a Pandora charm with um, Marley's initials engraved on the paw print and they got me this <laughs> water bottle because like everything in basket other than the Pandora charm was pink so they got me this pink um, water bottle they got me like candles they got me a notepad hello kitty notepad i love those girls so much oh my goodness speaking of those girls guys they started a business <laughs> they're so cute they started a small business together you're not gonna believe what they're doing go ahead guess girl go ahead and guess handmade jewelry <laughs> Oh, my babies following in my footsteps. Oh my goodness, so cute. So I'm definitely going to be supporting their business. I actually have so, some donations to give them that I collected for them. So <laughs> if I go and see them later, I'll definitely bring you guys along and let them fill you in. Fill you in on their little business venture. It's adorable. See, you definitely can leave a legacy without having children, y'all. As people love to tell me, what about your legacy, Tony? What about your legacy? In my opinion, and this is an unpopular opinion, your kids don't have anything to do with your legacy. I know a lot of guys w would hope that. A lot of men, I think, wish. But your kids are not your legacy, sir. I'm sorry to break the news to you. Like Your legacy is what you contribute to the world. Not your kids. Name one of Rosa Parks' daughters. Quickly, quickly, quickly. See what I'm saying? Your legacy is what you you leave this world with. And I'm pretty happy with mine, to be honest, thus far. Hopefully I can continue to make a positive impact on the world um, the longer I'm here. That's the goal. This is the Aunt Jackie's Not On My Watch Instant Detangling. Um, I don't know what you call it. Instant Detangling Lotion. It's a really thin consistency. I've been using this stuff for a while actually um, I, I came across it on YouTube I saw really good reviews on it so I purchased it and then um, hair by half also uses it as you guys know she's a mobile stylist so she uses it on herself as well as her clients and she has good results um, regardless of hair texture because her clients have all different hair textures so yeah I like it it's a uh, inexpensive relatively easily accessible so normally to be honest i would detangle with a deep conditioner so i kind of detangle pre-poo deep condition all in one step before i wash my hair but today i'm not going to do that because i got some errands to run so i'm just going to try to get a lot of the shed hair out for my braids okay halfway done let's get the other side done I'm just gonna put some a little bit of my growth oil on my scalp. I'm almost out of my growth oil. Um, so I will be making a video on my growth oil recipe. I've been using growth oil pretty much my entire natural hair journey. A couple brands that I you know flip-flop back and forth for years. Uh, when the most recent one ran out, I honestly just started making my own based on the oils that work best in my experience. And that's what I've been using since. So I'll definitely come and make a video and show you my little recipe. All right, hair is all detangled and moisturized. It feels really good. Here's my shed hair, five weeks worth. Yes, it's a lot. 
yes, I'm a shedder. Nothing to be alarmed about. Trust me, I can tell when my hair is shedding excessively because it's happened before. Okay, these are some of the things I'm donating to the girls' new business. I've got some gold beads, some silver beads, some wooden beads, some citrine. They're very into crystals as well, just like their auntie. And some moss agate. So yeah, I'm gonna go make my little donation to them now. Okay, this is their bedroom door, and this is their logo. They've named their company besties.co, so they turned their bedroom into their headquarters. And then right, <laughs> right here they have a piggy bank for donations. So this is like the original Kickstarter, okay? A piggy bank. Their goal is $315. How much do you have so far? Zero. Zero? Oh my god. And they're open. Open. You're not open for business yet though, are you? Our warehouse is open. Your warehouse is open. Okay, it says open until 11 p.m. on weekends. My goodness, you guys are up late. The manager, two managers and one employee. <laughs> this is their cousin, Amira. So Naya and Araya are the managers. So manager and co-manager. Co-manager, co-manager. Y'all are so professional. Not allowed. No being rude. No messing up or moving things. No stealing. No food. Ask first. No dirty shoes or shoes in general. This means that if you're doing any of these actions, you'll be kicked out. Very good. Okay, we're here at besties.co headquarters. Organizing inventory. So when do you expect to launch? It depends on... Um Depends on the schedule. And what you have. Okay. So you're trying to like stock up first. Yeah. I love that. And Naya just happens to be wearing a shirt that says mini influencer on it. Mm -hmm. I can't wait to come shopping. Yeah. Like, a, like a little basket. Yeah. At the front. That's a good but idea. Obviously, we have to clean the room first. Obviously. Here's Araya playing Roblox. She's on break. She, she clocked out. She didn't do any work. What? You clocked out before you did work? Uh, Here's the inventory so far. Beautiful, hand beaded bracelets. Look at these beautiful gold ones. Beautiful. No. I'll definitely be purchasing these ones. I'm on my way home, guys. It's kind of a rainy day today, so if you hear the windshield wipers in the background, that's why. But aren't you so proud of the girls? I'm so proud of the girls. Oh, my little mini influencers and now business entrepreneurs. So cute. I feel like they've kind of moved on from wanting to be TikTok stars to now wanting to own a business, which I love. And I'm just really glad that I was able to be an example of both. Like they actually knew somebody who was an influencer, you know? and they actually know somebody who has a small business so sometimes you don't know something's possible if you don't if you never see it so i'm really glad that i'm able to be that for them um just so that they have options you know like their mom is a is brilliant she's independent career woman so I, i'm just glad that they have like multiple examples of what's possible because I feel like I just didn't have that. Like I had one example. Um, <laughs> I grew up very stereotypically Jamaican, okay? For all my millennials who remember In Living Color, you might remember this segment. It was about a Jamaican family and each family member basically had more jobs than the previous one. Like uh, two jobs, three jobs, four jobs, five jobs. They did everything. They were the waiter, the, the dishwasher, the bus driver, the mailman, they did everything and like, it's a stereotype, but for me, it was actually a stereotype that rang true. I watched my dad have multiple jobs. He laid concrete, he did drywall, he did landscaping. You know, my mom was a nurse, a nanny, a house cleaner. So, you know, my family just had multiple jobs. That's what I saw, that's what I was used to. I never saw anybody as a business owner. So it's just nice that I can be that for them even my nephews like my nephews are older now they're in their 30s but they're both like you know starting businesses and 
they've seen somebody who did it and I just love that I can you know be that like small spark for them I actually am high key jealous like I wish I had a me when I was younger I wish I had somebody who I saw do an alternate life's path. I think I'd be in a much different space right now if I had that. Even like Keisha, like I wish that I had somebody, you know, the cool young child-free auntie that I could move in with. Just knowing that you have that person there is very reassuring, you know, if anything ever happens or if you don't find a home in time, if you don't find a house in time, if you, whatever, you just know that you have a safe, fun clean loving home that welcomes you like i just wish that i had that as uh when i was younger but alas we all have different paths and um, i'm definitely very content with where i am i'm just so grateful that i now have the opportunity to be that for them you know and if that's my life's work i am more than happy with what i've done you know just being able to encourage them let them know that they can be anything and do anything um even if it's just to be an example of you can buy a house on your own you can live with your family you can live with your sister you can um start a business you can you know be an influencer like if it, if it's just a little tiny seed or spark that i was able to sow then I'm happy and like all of my nieces and nephews are just smart, well-rounded, great kids, you know, so I just see great things for them and it's nice to have a small part in that. All right, let's get started on my Rasta pasta for tonight. I have a video on this already, by the way. It is definitely simple to make and it's a crowd favorite. Keisha requests this often. <laughs> Lots of veggies. I might sneak some spinach in here too. I have to hide the veggies in <laughs> Keisha's room. Let's see if she notices. My Rasta pasta is done. How delicious does it look? I used bow ties today because um, it's actually all I had. I didn't have any penne noodles. So that is done like dinner. I'm just gonna make it pretty. Make it pretty, add some green on top. And that's ready to go. My chicken just needs a couple more minutes in the oven. It's almost done. <laughs> 